Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, Hannibal Season 3, Episode 2, Primavera, William Bibiani, Alonzo Duralde. We are not sponsored, we just needed caffeine this morning. Um, I didn't sleep well because I watched that episode <laughs> at night, which I try never to do. I, it's a bad idea, I, the no, I, creepy much, ass ending to this week's yeah, episode. Yeah, see, when this was a Friday show, I could watch it like Saturday afternoon in broad daylight and I was okay for a Monday recap. Mm -hmm. Now I have to watch them at night. But you can get up early. I could get up early. These but, are the problems. The other problem I have with this that has nothing to do with the show is RB He's advertised in this week's episode, and I'm like, I don't <laughs> Do know if Arby's know? should be advertising on Hannibal <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Oh, and, uh, and I think really anybody that advertises on the show really needs to up their visual game. Because right. You have to make your product look better than one drop of blood in well, slow motion. You it's know? like all of the insert shots in the show, and I think uh, even Brian has talked about this. Brian Fuller has talked about this before. Are done by a second unit guy who shoots like shoots like he shoots like classy commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he, he, he told it, us that last week. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it looks so much better, and like. Last week, so last week we had Brian Fuller on the show. Mm. That was great, but that was more of like a, a, a recap sort of interview than it was a criticism. So before we get into this week, was there anything you wanted to say on last week's show that you couldn't because Brian was there? Oh, no. I, <laughs> I would tell him to his face. I think we all would. Um, uh, yeah, you know, and, and, and definitely this episode, there was a whole lot of whispering going on. This was a very, so this was a very quiet, very, very small episode. Even though it all took place in these grand locations, mm -hmm. that church is gorgeous, and even the Italian like police precinct is a badass. Yeah, like, I that, thought holy the God. God. I thought Gotham PD had a ridiculous headquarters. Yeah. but like Palermo is not doing so bad either. But this is a very grand staircase, which every police station should have. This know? is a very quiet episode, mostly between Will and Abigail, sort of. Right. And uh, a little bit of uh, Detective Pozzi, who. Uh, Fans of the books and the movies will know from uh, Hannibal, who was played by Giancarlo Giannini in the Ridley Scott movie. Oh. So you might know where some idea of where he's probably going, but they are taking that character in an interesting place because when we see him in Ridley Scott's Hannibal, he's already kind of corrupt. Like his his career has turned to crap. He's got a young wife who like wants all this money and stuff, and he's just so willing to sell out. Here, he is a very different character. He's very uh, noble and inspired. They try to play him off as the Italian Will Graham, mm. which is kind of an interesting dynamic. What do you think of that character? Uh, well, you know, it's, I, I saw Hannibal when it came out, the the, the Ridley Scott movie, yeah. and I barely remember that he was in it. Really? Oh, really? He, the movie stops for uh, like 40 minutes to follow him. It's about weird. all I remember from that movie is Ray Liotta eating his own brain. That was delicious. That's kind of it. So I, you know, yeah. I, and I haven't read the Thomas Harris books, and. Uh, Oh, okay. And it's, at a certain point in this, I thought, I'm not going to, because these are obviously sort of playing fast and loose with them, and you're always very good about anchoring, like, oh, this is from that one, this is from that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a figured, big fan of all the novels and the movies. Yeah, well, so, not Hannibal Rising. So, so I thought I would but, kind of, yeah. I, I would be the guy who comes into this fairly, you know, un... No, fine, I was just curious. Um, no, the character is interesting, and, you know, uh, obviously my initial thought is, well, dead meat. Um, <laughs> yeah. But if he's a major character in the Harris universe, then I'm sure we'll get a few more yeah. weeks out of him. Uh, I did not see the Abigail twist coming, admittedly. It's interesting, like... They they played that off. I think if that had they had saved the reveal that Abigail has been in Will's head this entire time for the end of the episode, it would have seemed cheap. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been just like oh, oh fuck it you, Hannibal. It, it would have been like, and the thing is, this is a twist we've seen many a time, even sure. like before the Fight Club and yeah, all yeah, the ones yeah. that are famous now. Spoilers, uh, but um, but uh, no, here I think it was good because it was actually. Very short. They didn't linger on it too long. They didn't get to drop too many clues. She kind of disappears right. when Patsy shows up in the police precinct. But maybe I don't know. It could have just been a uh, an oversight. Uh, but it, I think it speaks volumes about Will's character and the impact that everything has had on him lately. And frankly, he's always been one step into insanity from episode uh, one. Yeah, yeah. He's he's fairly fragile, and uh, you know, clearly this has been a huge sort of uh, you know trauma for him. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the, I love their initial conversation. It was. It felt very true detective. Time is a flat circle. All the oh, all, all no. the all the ends must take it's place. Some really pretentious dialogue in this episode ah. in particular. I'm not. I'm not even saying that is a bad thing. I think it's just the style no, on is, this show. I mean, th there's always look. There is. I don't think there's been a single conversation on this show that sounds like. A natural, casual a natural conversation. conversation. Yeah. It's all there. There's a there's a there's an elevated sense to it, but it's so consistently at that kooky level that it works. It's not like mm -hmm. a movie, say like Aloha, where they're going for that sort <laughs> yeah. of. So over stylized well, Billy Wilder dialogue and it just falls flat. You kind of believe these conversations in the context of this. I mean. I, I, you know, the, the emotional every, and this, philosophical this, 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 and psychological stakes are so high on this show, sure. I buy that people are thinking this way. Exactly, and it matches the 
the insanely meticulous art direction of everything. Yeah. You know, even you know, you walk into a room where where like a horrible thing has happened, or where there's you know debris, and it's still all very delicately placed, and <laughs> symmetrical, and stuff. so sure, the dialogue should totally go with that. You know. Yeah. Um, I, 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 the, the, the whole heart thing I, I found mm. kind of fascinating because. It's really creepy. Well, there's that there's that strain of European Catholicism that's all about the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the blood of the saints and the you know yeah. the, I mean I grew up Spanish so like there's a there's a, there's a very visceral sanguine brand of Catholicism that <laughs> I'm sure and, and oh nice, yeah no nice. seriously and so yeah. I think and I think the Italians probably share that to some extent a little so. bit I wasn't raised that Catholic though gotcha so I did that just was a very potent image to have that I thought in the middle of this cathedral you know yeah and and honestly the the it starts off with just the image of he basically full a human being into an origami heart. Yes. Already grotesque. And then he makes like a heart heart. Like <laughs> with like the other kind of heart. Uh, it's just like it is one of the most disturbing like nightmare fantasy hallucinations I've ever seen on this show. It's just so otherworldly and spindly and, and then when gross. it turns into the stag. That's yeah. I mean that's a heart. Right. Oh oh a heart. I see what you're saying. A heart heart. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yes, heart, well, heart. I, I think it's going to be a line of Valentine cards next year. Oh my God, I would totally buy those. That's <laughs> awesome. I was just—it was just really disturbing. But I think <clears throat> for me, again, so we had like a whole episode following Hannibal and Bedelia, mm -hmm. and now we're having a whole episode following. Well, with, like, Hannibal shows up, but only like right at the end, only in the shadows, in the catacombs, sure, sort of like the yeah. Phantom of the Church, um, and in flashback, and in flashback. But for me, I feel like this whole episode is building to. The last line, which is, I, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. That is, first off, that's some born supremacy kind of crap right there. That's <laughs> like just we're doing all this just to forgive him. But I mean, this whole series has been so much about just will Will and Hannibal connect. They obviously love each other so much, and they just can't. There's just so much in their way, and yeah. here it's just like, you, we, we each broke each other's hearts, and now it's time to. Now it's time to forgive. Yeah, now man. the mending begins. Now the <laughs> mending begins. Uh, it's, it's kind of sweet, actually, and the, like the way, yeah. I love that there were references to the Beach Boys and Peanuts in this episode. Well, didn't get which one was the Peanuts one? Uh, was it? It's like Lucy and the Football. Oh right, right. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the fact that um, uh, they basically accuse God of being a serial killer. When, well, yeah. Because when, when Will says, this is his design, mm -hmm. you know, because this is my design, it's his whole, when he goes into the mind of, you know, the other killers and figures out yeah. what they did and why. So when he, that line, I was like, oh, whoa, we're throwing down now. Well, that's, a, that's another thing that's been in the Thomas Harris novels, actually from the beginning. Oh, you yeah. know, God, killing must feel good to God. He does it all the time. Sure, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that, the whole bit about a uh, ceiling falling on a church of uh, people at just people mm -hmm. praying and doing all their business, killing them all. That's an image that's been concocted early on. In fact, they even referenced it earlier in the series. Really? Okay. And, uh, and it, there really is, it's interesting because compared to uh, the novels and compared to even the movies, this interpretation of Hannibal Lecter, the character, is godlike. He's like a trickster god. He's mm. like nothing he can't do. It's like, seriously, you could literally do anything and you'd be fine. He's playing the theremin. I'm like, of course he knows how to play the theremin. Why wouldn't he? Surely he took that three month correspondence course. Like, come on. So, like, it, the whole thing is like Hannibal isn't god. On this show, he might as well be. He's certainly a god. He's kind of he's written that way. Yeah. He's a demon. He's a monster. <laughs> and he's capable of anything. In fact, he is, um, this is something that people have suspected based from the books before, but that he is El Mostro. Ah. El Mostro was a, was a character who wasn't really a character, he was just part of uh, Patsy's subplot in mm -hmm. Hannibal, the novel. I don't really talk about him much uh, in the movie. Um, and he was a serial killer, and Patsy caught him, uh, based on an actual moment of genuine inspiration. He did go to the FBI training, and then it just went all to hell, and it destroyed his credibility, and some people have postulated that Hannibal was Il Mostro all along. They're going for it. As you say, they pretty much seem to be coming right out and saying it. They <laughs> are. Like, here's a fucking picture. Like, yeah, what do you want? You know? You know? Uh, uh, but I, I, I love the idea that, uh, that, that his first sort of artistic inspiration for, for this path that he would go on was Botticelli's Primavera, you know, right. the spring, you know, where the new life comes forth from the well, earth. Well, it's also just a very artistic, it's a, it's a very artistic place to be a serial killer. Oh, Florence? In Florence. Yeah, totally, if you're yeah. going to be a serial killer, be a serial killer yeah. in Florence. That's, that's where that's you awesome. do your internship. You know, right. And then you, you move on. <laughs> right. Um, uh, Brian did promise last week that this, this, this episode would rival the Overlook Hotel in terms of actual bloodiness. That's um, quite a bit. And, you know, I, I, I am st constantly stunned that this show is on network television. Yeah. Like, that, that NBC is like, yeah, okay, fine. I mean, 
Because and, and then I and I wonder, is it because they go so over the top? Like, can you get away with the throat spray coming out of Abigail only because you then fill the kitchen with right. raspberry jello, you know, and, and there's a there's a disconnect. It doesn't seem real. Yeah. It seems like a dream. Yeah, like if it were I, I just buy that. that yeah, spray makes sense. and then like we were gone. I think that might be more intense well, than I don't know. Like I've know. seen episodes of Law and Order SVU that don't necessarily have that level of gore, uh -huh. but they'll like, they'll describe it. Oh. And that's actually almost worse because you know it's real. Sure, like, you no, know no, that and, that's based on and, real crime. And don't get me wrong, I don't think this show is. It, it's not exploitative in any oh, way. No, no, no. Its violence means something. Yeah. It's certainly presented in a way that they, clearly they put some thought into it. There's a really yeah. interesting discussion about this actually on the uh, the Vulture TV podcast. Hmm. Matt Zoller Sites talks about this. How yeah, there's a lot of those SVU shows and and, and other shows are just kind of you want to take a shower after. They're grungy. They're, they're gross. They're creepy and they use violence in a gross way. This yeah. show is I think very at least very smart about it. Mm -hmm. has, has has an aesthetic about it. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah, I'm not trying to lump it in, but I'm just saying, in just in terms of television standards, right? That you know, because I'm a wuss, and I, so <laughs> you I get, are, I get grossed out easily. So I just I see them, and I'm you like, are. ah, why am I? This is well, TV. This is not even like you know basic cable. For me, know? I'm just consistently mm -hmm. amazed this is on network television because when you think about it, nothing happens this week. This is just a long. Very, and again, I'm just going to say that, I don't mean it negatively, very pretentious conversation, <laughs> very heady stuff. You couldn't put this level of discourse on the news <laughs> without people saying, well, t pull it back. Come on. There are normal people watching this. We don't want to hear that shit. Just bring, <laughs> well, I, what, I, what are you really talking I, about? Again, I think the dialogue matches the drapes. Exactly. In this case, you know, <laughs> the and, that's, and that's, how, that's how they get away with it. So... But uh, oh. I, but I gotta say, like after the the, it seemed like at the end of last season, with that huge climax with Hannibal and the massive bloodbath, yes, uh, that the show was really gonna sort of kick into some kind of a high gear in terms of okay, well now all the cards are on the table, yeah. shit's gonna hit the fan, yeah, car, time, yeah. car chases everywhere, right? And mm. that is no, nope. <laughs> and we are taking all the time necessary to just show how damaged everyone. That's what's really important right now. Sure, and that is another daring thing. Where if I were, you know. If, Brian were saying, I'd be like, again, are you worried about losing people? Mm. Like, I wonder how people are, are responding to this. I know there are some people who are just total diehards. Sure. Like, people like me who just love the Thomas Harris stuff, people like you who's just a big fan of the show. But I wonder if there are more people who are more casual. And let me know in the comments, like, are, are, is the show losing you because it's really getting very quiet right now when it really could be kicking in? I'm curious. I, mean, I hope not because I, I, I think it's great. I, I, I can imagine new viewers being like, Oh, I heard this show is, you know, this and it's that, you know. Yeah. But I think if you've been watching for the first two seasons, this doesn't seem that removed. I mean, granted, we're not doing the killer of the week kind of thing anymore. Right. There's not the sort of propulsion of will will get out of the asylum and prove that it's actually Hannibal. Da, da, da. Right. But I think that the show has trained us at this point to be ready for this much nothing in a way, you know, or this or this little sort yeah. of plot advancement and to for it to be about atmosphere and character and 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 all that kind of thing. So I, I think if you've been if you've been in up till now, we're still generally on the same page. I would be fascinated to find out what someone saw to so, what someone thought who only just watched like this episode. <laughs> like what would you think this show was? Because if you look back, I, I started rewatching it because um, my girlfriend hadn't seen it before, so uh -huh. I started rewatching it from the beginning. This show eases you into the insanity. Mm. Like the first half, even more so, of the first season is, is a clever and more interesting and more intelligent, but a pretty straightforward cop show in a lot of ways. Uh -huh. Killer of the Week, right. following up on leads, all that kind of stuff. And then it just gets getting more and more hallucinatory, more and more heady and philosophical as it goes on to the point where it's, uh, this seems normal. This is not normal. This is strange right. television. They have eased us into it. Yeah. I, I, will, I will grant you that. And but it's no. great. I love it. That's yeah, so cool. Yeah, like, this, I think is, it's this is languorous in a way that, that television <laughs> usually doesn't allow itself to be. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll pick up where this leaves off uh, next week. Week. Thanks for joining us.